Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Mmm, coffee. I feel like it's one of the things I actually love most in this world. Today I have a new stamp set that I'm going to use for the first time and it's all about coffee. I don't know what will happen. I'm excited to share it with you because, you know, it could be cute, could be a hot mess. Who's to say? I'll let you decide once you see how the card project turned out. That card project is coming up next. So here's a look at the products I'll be using for today's card celebrating love of coffee. This stamp set is called Cup of Love and I absolutely love the bird's eye view of the cup, different little uh, latte art that you can stamp in there. We've got a little branch, we've got some super sweet greetings, a, a heart here, a heart here, and a spoon. And there is a small die set to cut out a few of the elements, which makes that so fun for building a card. I just pulled the browns that I have from Simon Says Stamp. I also grabbed my Intense Black ink because I'm probably gonna do some type of coloring, but I haven't decided yet. And of course, I have my brand new Simon Says Stamp blender brush. Haven't even used the brown one yet. And I'm using the smaller size. Just for a frame of reference, these new brushes come in two sizes. They have premium bristles. They come with the colored handles to make it really easy to pair them with color families. They are fantastic quality. Cute little paw on the back. And so today I'm going to be using this to do maybe what I'm hoping will be a little bit of gradient blending with one of my latte art. I also have some Nina Solar White Classic Crest cardstock that I'm gonna start out doing some stamping on. So let's get started with the stamping. I'm gonna take this backer off and I'm gonna grab the coffee, place that down there. I'm going to take a spoon because I think that's very cute. I also think I'm going to stamp the, oh my gosh, but you know what would be really cute? It'd be cute to have an extra heart in there. I wonder if I could wedge that there. We're gonna start with all of these elements just as is. Yeah, you know what, we'll do that. These are all gonna be stamped in Simon Intense Black. So I'm gonna reposition my cardstock here. And of course, because these are new stamps that I haven't stamped with yet, I'm gonna rub my fingers over them to kind of get that coating off. Let's ink up our stamps with the Intense Black. The Intense Black is a great ink. It is Copic friendly or alcohol marker friendly, whichever markers you have. So let's let's give it a let's give it a look. I promise here. All right, pressing this down, I'm going to grab my stamp press tool here. This is called a Debbie tool, and this just helps me to apply pressure to the platform door. Well, my wrists are kind of kind of wonky after years of all the pointing and clicking I've done in as my in my career as a graphic designer, and this really does help me to not have to press that way. So let's lift it up. Well, it looks pretty good. I think I'm going to stamp it one more time just to get it a little inkier. And that is the beauty of the Misty tool, letting you stamp in the same place. Oh. It's the reason I kept stamping, my friends. I, I'm not gonna lie, this tool is probably the most valuable player in my craft space. So I have this here, now this is good. So I will cover this up because the next thing I'm gonna do requires the Misty. Oh, my, <laughs> my stamp chamois, which I keep in one of these handy dandy, uh, yeah, it's a chef. It's actually a salt cellar, but you can get this now at Simon Says Stamp. It's great because it makes this less smelly because it just lets enough air in. But I need to go damp this down a little because it's it's a little too dry to clean. And now I'll just lightly wipe this off. Of course, if I really want to give my stamps a good clean, I'll use a product like Ultra Clean. Both uh, Simon Says Stamp and Hero Arts have a fantastic stamp cleaner. But for now, I'm just gonna take these, pop them right back onto the acetate. Good enough for now. Do you ever do this when you're working on a project where you're not sure how it's gonna go? And I know I'm gonna have to figure out how to color those things, and I will, 
but I don't want to start out stamping and, and ruin this and start over again. Sometimes I'm in the mood to do that, but sometimes I'm not. So I'm going to grab a piece of cardstock that's just technically a, a sample. I'm going to set, or not a sample, it's a scrap. I just pulled it from my scrap bin. And I'm just going to see how this works because again, these are brand new stamps. I, I can't, I can't lie. I love, <laughs> love this one here. So I'll try this one. You know what? Maybe I'll grab the heart one too, because that's very cute. And maybe this heart could fit right over in the mug. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to try a couple and just see if the technique that I'm envisioning is going to work. Because what I want to do is I want to get something that looks like I've got a blend or gradient of sorts on the stamp. Now, again, I'm going to do this because, you know, it's a, uh, it's brand spanking new. I've got two inks. One is a dark chocolate and one is a khaki. I think these are pretty accurate. Sometimes they get hit by the sun because I don't have blinds in the craft slash dining room. And then I'm sad and they don't look anything like they look on the side. So let's stamp this down. And here's the beautiful thing with this process. I want this to be a I'm not going to double stamp it because I really do want this to look lighter in the center. And so I'm not even gonna touch this yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my dark chocolate here and I'm gonna load up my brush. This is the first time using it, right? See that? And here's a nice thing too, because this is a sample, I can just tap this off a little and see how it's looking. Because what I'm gonna do here is just go around the edges with this color to create a little gradient and by not cleaning off the other stamp I think this will look good let's see let's see we're testing it out that's why we do oh you can already see the ring see the ring <laughs> okay it didn't quite work the way I thought it would that did not that did not transfer at all it looked like it was going to so let's let's do it again loading up maybe I don't need to tap off because what I really need to do here is just, well, let's just load it up. It looked like it on the actual uh, stamp. Get that there and press. I don't think I allowed it to transfer. I think this will work. Because that way I can see what I'm doing. Did it work? Boop. Well, a little bit. Not that much, huh? I wonder why. Okay, one more time. What do you think it's going to be? It looked like it wanted to, but it just didn't. So we're going to do it again. The other thing I could do if I was feeling, no, I, but I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to do sort of a, what do you call it? Um, like a shading in with a Copic. How's that? That is just not transferring, huh? All right, let's try it again. I'm gonna actually just stamp it out and see if that changes the color. <laughs> let's see that. Okay. Well, there you go. Now you got a dark chocolate. That's not working. I think what we need to do is the reverse, okay? We're gonna start dark chocolate, okay? Like that, load it up. We're gonna go around the edge with dark chocolate. Cause this is a very juicy pad too. It's very, okay, there's a gnat flying around my workspace. Please go away, gnat, I hate bugs. Okay. Pouncing that on there, potching it on. Now we're in the corner, we're gonna press. I think this is gonna work because what I wanna do now, I think I just had the, the, um, the order wrong. Why is this ink not transferring? I am so baffled by this. That looks like a coffee stain. I think the problem is, I think I need to actually just ink. I need to go directly onto, here's an idea. We're gonna ink directly like that, right? And then we're gonna take our brush and take it off from the middle. I think that's the, that's the ticket. Okay. So we do that. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> Let's see what that looks like. I think that's what we needed. 
I think I was not transferring enough ink and now, oh yes. Okay, let's take this, wipe this down. We will stamp the khaki right into the middle. Okay, I think that's what we're gonna do. Oh, bring this in. Okay. And that gives us much more of that sort of messy coffee center. So I'm glad I did that because I think I wasn't getting enough on the brush. I think sometimes with a dye ink, and of course it is stained, but this is, this is, there's nothing, there's nothing coming off that. So don't be freaked out when you're, you know, when your stamps might look like they have a little, but this is great because then it also allows you to really easily see how to place your coffee center in the middle of your mug. All right, I think that's good to go. And so pick this up and we are gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna just ink it in dark chocolate like that. Then with my brush, let's bring this in here. We're just gonna, we're just gonna kind of pick it up. That's how we're gonna soften it. That way, I think that is, yeah. So I just learned a new technique. Well, it's not a new technique, but if sometimes with the type of ink you're using, you just have to, you just have to play around. Okay, let's do that. We can always add more if we need to. So let's bring it down and let's stamp. And I will really just give this a second to transfer. Get you in here, All right? Transferring that in. And let's pick that up. Oh, that is just perfection. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, and now I will take this again, just wipe that down and take my khaki to add this in. One thing I should mention to you, I don't drink fancy coffees. I don't think I, I, I don't think I mentioned that, but I'm not a latte person. I'm not a mocha person. I drink my coffee black and oh, that looks so good. And I drink a coffee that my, uh, has been made by the company that my husband used to work for. That's what I was looking for called Espresso Royale Cafe. And, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to link it below because they're a small company in Michigan. Well, the coffee shop itself closed because of the pandemic. Um, all the all the shops closed, but the roasters are still going strong. And I'm going to tell you, <laughs> it's good coffee. They're actually opening a shop, I believe, in Ann Arbor soon. So if you're a Michigander, you might want to check it out. All right, this is what I wanted. So now I'm going to grab some Copics and move on. Now, if you know me, you know I don't do a whole heck of a lot of coloring. Let's see here. And that's because... <laughs> I'm not very good at it, but I think I can handle this. So let's do, let's do a couple colors here, R22 and R24. Just want to show you too, I have replaced all of the chisel nibs on my Copics, right? I keep the brush side, which scares the crap out of me on a daily basis. And I go with the chisels because it just gives me a bit more control. And so I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to color of, oh, I, I don't know if you can hear in the background, but my coffee pot, which is brand new, just started making a soft, delicate steaming noise as if to say, I support you, Kathy. Way to go. All right. We're laying down our first color. An image like this for me, and actually it's so much easier to color. I'm going to come in with the darker red like that. Maybe I will come in with this side. Sometimes, sometimes I get bold like that. Because I want this to kind of have, you know, a bit of shade and shadow to it. It's not, again, it's not my strong suit. Copics, they scare me. But I think this will be okay, right? Get a little mid, make that almost feel like a little mid-tone in there. That's kind of nice. Oh, I do have the small one here. So the reason I like the small is because it actually just gives me a little more control. When I'm coloring. Now this is T1. The toners are sort of a nice cool color. I just thought this would be nice. I don't know how to do light and shadow to make it look like this is made out of, uh, you know, metal. <laughs> Forgive me. 
But uh, I thought, you know, this th this will be fine. I'll do a little shading on where the lines are here because that seems to be like, that would make sense. And maybe a little like that, you know, just a little, just a little, nothing, nothing heroic. I'm not going to be a hero today. Nope. No, sir. I'm just going to do that a little bit like that. And I think that's fine. I will often test my markers to see is this just a bad idea? Mm, that's a bad idea. I don't like that. So I do have E000, which is really light. And then I have E00. Okay, I think, I think these are better choices. Well, we'll see. I don't want this to have a lot of color. And this is actually called pale fruit pink, but check it out. I don't think that's very pink. I use this a lot for faces, so you know, let's just let's just color this in, and this might be perfect. See, the thing with Copics and me is a lot of times I get into this position where I just don't, I don't really know what color is going to be the best choice, you know. And I know that maybe maybe with practice, I'll get better. I don't know why I'm doing it this way, by the way, going around in a circle. I could have just done it all at once. You know, maybe I'll get better, and I'm sure that I will over time. I just don't practice enough because it's not my favorite. This is not my favorite. Look at that. Bring that around. And get the little handle. And then I'll maybe take one more. Is that the one that I liked? Oh, wrong, wrong, uh. Oh, and I will have all these colors listed below, by the way. I'm kind of, I'm kind of terrible at remembering to, uh, you know, make this easy for you. And then again, go a little darker on the edge of the saucer. Like that. Just work our way around. I always turn my paper, because I'm not a very good colorer and I need to be drawing away, I always need to pull the marker away from what I'm doing. But I think, you know, considering I just wanted this to be very subtle, I think that's not bad. Here. Very, very simple. Like that. So what do we do? Brown berries or red berries? Like that. And then I'll take my lighter marker. I'll just go over there like that. Not really gonna see much of that. Okay, those, <laughs> those are my elements. So let me grab the dies and we will cut this stuff out. So I've got all the dies taped into place here on the platform of my Spellbinders Platinum 6. And I'll just go ahead and run this through. Take this off, and now I can take a look at all of my elements. Let's get the, hmm, it's very sticky. Okay, there's one. Oh, I didn't cut that really all that well, <laughs> but I think it's gonna be okay. That looks great. And let's just pop this guy out too. Come on now, come off the tape. Oh, that, that, that did good. Look at that, there's a cute little hole there. And those are the elements for my card. So let's move on to the next step. So now comes the time where I, I kind of start arranging and I really do want this to be a very simple card. I'm gonna pop up the cup. I'm gonna have the leaf below it. I'm gonna have the these things on top and kind of create a gathering, right? But I think what I'm gonna do is I want to use let's get together as my greeting. So I think what that means is before I stamp this down, I think I just have to eyeball this because I am going to cut this panel down a little bit. I'm going to cut it down once it's all done. And I might even splatter on it. I don't know. We're, we're, we're just going all in here, right? Maybe this comes up a little and maybe that's there. But I'll tell you what I know for sure I want to do. I want to emboss Let's Get Together in gold powder. The Simon Antique Gold is legit my favorite warm gold powder. So let me grab my Misty and we'll stamp that down. I'm just gonna leave this in place right now. Again, I know, you know, pretty much that's gonna be good. And the reason why I'm gonna do this step right now is because 
if my paper warps at all from the heat embossing, let's get these things out of here, it will be fine because I will be able to cut this out using a die. So here's what I'll do. I'll take my embossing magic. I'm just going to powder this up so that my powder only sticks to where I am embossing. But I'm going to ink this up with my clear embossing ink. And this is from Simon Says Stamp, it's my current favorite embossing ink. Press this down and transfer the ink. I don't want to press too hard. I just want it to be nice and even here because I don't want to smush that delicate let's get together. I think that will be good enough. And I'll sprinkle on my antique gold powder like that. Let it sit for just a second. And let that go again. Okay. And then uh, that looks like it did a good job. So we'll funnel this back in like that. Very easy to do. All right, my nice shiny greeting. See that there? Well, let's see, see how shiny that is. Now I had one more idea and I thought it would be cute if maybe I splattered a little on here. So I got, I'm gonna grab a brush. I'm gonna bring in my splatter box. I always just save, uh, let's see, let me get my ink though. I always just save my Simon Says Stamp boxes because they are perfect for spray glue or splattering or anything you want to do. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of the khaki and I've got a little, little jar of water here and I've got my number, is this the number four? Number four fan brush. So great for splattering. I'm just going to smush on a little of this ink because I think the khaki, I think having a lighter color would be better. Dip my brush in here get my brush a little wet and then just pick this up and then I'll practice. I'll just splatter on a little. I don't want much. I just want it a little like that. So subtle, right? Not going overkill here. I just wanted a few splatters. Isn't that pretty? All right, moving on. I'm gonna take this panel die. I really just want this to be the same from side to side and have this be straight. And I think that gives me enough room. So I'm gonna tape this down and we'll cut this out and it will help to flatten it out. Ooh, a little squeaky there. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm gonna grab my cardstock ring. So often I go with white card bases, but you know, I could also do, you know, I could do some brown card base here. What if I, you know, I could do a warm cocoa I could do the dark chocolate in the Gina K. What do I have in Simon Browns? I have, ooh, oh, oh, I have the dark chocolate in Simon. You know, or heck, I could even do like a, like a lipstick red for something a little bolder. See, I always go so conservative with my colors and I'm never really sure, but you know what? Lipstick red could be super pretty, right? Because it would just, yeah, I don't know. Or, Let's see here, schoolhouse red would be a little more conservative. Or yeah, the chocolate, I don't know. I'm, I'm, st I'm thinking out loud here. It doesn't really match the way I want it to, you know? But maybe, no, that doesn't either. I don't know, this is where I think to myself, Kathy, <laughs> just make a decision. I always like to just go like that. So would you do a cherry red or would you go with, oh gosh, you know what? I'm gonna go with the schoolhouse red. All right, let me grab a piece and we'll make our card. I'm feeling very bold right now because I so rarely go with a dark color, but I think this color kind of is gonna make everything come alive. So schoolhouse red, who knew? All right, getting you in here. Let's fold this card base down and look, we'll give this a nice press like that. Mm, love that, all right. Also, if you don't have a swatch cardstock swatch ring, I'm gonna pop a link up in the corner showing you a video that I did about it because I find it to be so useful when I, just, just for that reason, bringing it to the table, you know, and figuring out what you're gonna use. All right, let's visualize the top, bottom, side to side. Love the framing margin space. Isn't that pretty? Put it underneath. I guess the spoon could go underneath, but I don't, like that. I kind of want the spoon to go on top or 
is it better to put the spoon here like that? I don't I don't like that as much. I like I like the spoon. Well, yeah, I could have flipped it. Now I'm now I think I'm mess, mucking it up. I think I am going to have to have a spoon up here. Okay, what if I did something more like that and the spoon was at the bottom because oftentimes you would do that, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you put the spoon at the bottom? And then we would put the heart on top of the spoon like that. What about that? I don't know. I'm struggling. Okay, let me pause for a second. Figured it out. I needed to do two more of these because I think what is going to need to happen is I'm going to trim, trim that down a little like that, trim that one down a little like that. And what's going to happen is, and I might even need to trim it down more because I want this to be giving me some greenery up top. Do I want to? Yeah, I think what started to happen was I just didn't have the balance that I needed. And I feel like having a couple overlapped here, that is just gonna give me a bit more balance, if that makes sense. And this can have a little pop over here. And this little guy can also come off of the boundary of the card. So let's do that. Let's get this out first of the back. I don't know why I'm using my fingernails for this. And I put the foam squares towards the inside uh, just so I had the ability to layer around. That look okay, we're just gonna pop you down there. And then literally can just use dot runner for this. It's so easy. I'm going to take this and just go boop like that. So you can even, <laughs> but you didn't know you could do that, right? You can boop, uh, boop dot runner. How's that? Is that good? I want to make sure that I still have room for my spoon and I do. And then also, let's see here if I can kind of overlap that a little. So that's coming out and down like that. I'm going to add a little adhesive to the back of that so that that is also breaking the plane right there. have some foam squares on the back of this heart. Now these are the thin foam squares because I didn't want it to have, you know, so much um, pop that it was, well, because we're already building up some dimension on this. I'm just going to go like that and kind of break the plane a little at an angle. That. And that way, that has a bit of a pop-up, but I'm going to put this little friend, the spoon, well, no, I don't want dimension on the spoon. Just want to put some tape on the spoon, just like you would with a spoon, and come down a little. I think that's what we needed to do. See that? Oh, that's cute. It took a while to get there. But you know, sometimes that's going to happen when you make a card, right? You're not really sure where you're going. You're not really sure how it's going to turn out. But I think this has the right amount of layers and dimension. You've got one, two, three elements repeating, plus the repetition of the red. Sometimes you just kind of play a bit, you know? So if something's not working, do what I did. Just take a pause, step back, think what else could I do to this card without overwhelming it? And I think the added greenery was the missing ingredient. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope this was fun for you. It was definitely fun for me. You will find all of the supplies linked below in the information box below the video. And I will see you back here with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.